HUT being how our university mm -hmm. and they also do seminars and, and things at their studio, mm -hmm. which I've gone to. So they're I haven't had a chance to get out yeah. there. And, I, and again, I'm cemented to right. this one I know, little, I know, I know. you know, two years in you know in, in the life of George Washington. You know, and it's so I'm just giving you all the information of how to bring out my Many parts. Yeah. It's a it's either four or five parts. Yeah. Very exciting. And using all kinds of um, primary sources and mm -hmm. paragraphs and something. Yeah. I mean, it, because we're discovering more and more, and more and more oral histories yes, are being actually accepted and, and, and documented and entered into these resources, you know, finally, ever since, you know. DNA evidence, you know, proof with the other thing you said about lineage. narratives, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're aware in Maryland that there's a big um, historical library in Baltimore, the Pratt, the Pratt Central Library. Okay, there's a big, they build a new building and it's having their own library and it also has the African American Library. Is that like in a No, 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 that's Baltimore City, that's in okay. Pratt, was built in the 1800s. But I borrowed some narratives, you know, some slave narratives mm -hmm. from there that are quite interesting. And one of the things they wrote, when you said that before about the words, mm -hmm. well, in the introduction to the slave narrative, it was quite interesting because what they said was that this, since the slaves, you know, weren't allowed to write, that, you know, somebody had to write for them. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just interpreting their words. <laughs> But the whites didn't want to write down what they had done to them. Yeah. Right. So if they said, you know, I was beaten or I was put in one of those horrible, you know, those yes, tolerance, the tolerance, the tolerance. Tolerance. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was, I don't want to write that down. I don't want to write that white people did that yeah. to you. So that was that's another thing they said was the whites didn't want to write down the horrible things that happened. Yeah. So the person said it, but they wouldn't write it down. Yeah. So that was in the introduction to the narrative. You know, it was quite interesting that the person who did the new, you know, the new edition, yeah. so to speak. Road the transcription, yeah. yeah. Road yeah. Down, so. But I'll have to tell you more about that library. <laughs> 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 it'll, it'll like take a, a couple days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just kind of running out down there. Yeah. Um, and then um, let's think. So exercise critical thinking, um, where you find all of these holes, and you're you're trying to connect the dots, as I said, you know, before in the beginning. Um, just exercise critical thinking. Stop and think. It was like. Did this person have the opportunity to possibly encounter X, Y, and Z? I've noticed here in this newspaper article that this person happened to be in the town and they gave a lecture or they gave a speech or they were here to receive an award or they were here in battle. Could that person have possibly interacted with this person? Um, and that will further expand, you know, your interpretation. Um, is it possible that maybe, you know, somebody in the family might have taught them secretly to, you know, to read? You know, again, expanding and connecting those dots to make a complete um, interpretation or a complete character. Whatever it is that you can think of, that if it's a possibility, if it's slightly plausible, because you're interpreting somebody that is not documented, you know, from beginning to end, I'd say included. I, 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 this is me going on the record saying included until you have information that it is not, you know, possible, which not just that I think you're not going to find that information, but if you're just engaging in an interpretation and you're not trying to like teach, teach the facts that you know, if it's documented, and you know that this occurred, and this happened to this person, and this person was born here, don't decide to make, you know, this person that is documented as being 35 years old in this particular year, 1790, you know, 97, as being, oh, well, because I'm 45, you know, <laughs> or, or I want to make them younger than they actually are because you're throwing off the whole entire interpretation you're giving um, information that you know is incorrect and it's going to affect so many other things and so many people around you if you're giving an, um, an a less than truthful interpretation. Yes? Uh, I just wanted to uh, my family's originally from West Virginia. Mm -hmm. So I started to do some family history in my great grandmother. And I kept looking for West Virginia and then I was like, there is a <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that expands, you know, where you need to look at. Because until 
until a certain time in history, yeah, it was recorded as Virginia. Yeah. It was recorded as Virginia. Yeah. So um, there are so many, so many different ways to, you know, to make again making your character complete, putting all the little Lego pieces together uh, to make um, <laughs> fun stuff happen. Yeah, add batteries. Um, <laughs> I hate low battery. I absolutely hate low battery. Yeah, to have your little energizer battery. Um, and test drive it. You know, you know, just try it out often. Um, okay. So does anybody have any particular um, oh, uh, questions or comments or anything that I did not um, cover before? Yes, dear. Uh, I, I've seen some of your tours at Mount Vernon. Yeah. Uh, where you portray Carolina, they're very good. Ooh. I was wondering if you could talk about first-person interpretation, where you are a character, and third-person interpretation, where you talk about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are the differences between those, and what are the benefits and cons to each of those? All right. Um, as far as first-person interpretation, again, you have to stick to the documented facts. Everything that has, have, and that has documentation um, concerning it, then you have to basically start with that. Um, you are already given your, your place, you know, so you already have your basis, your foundation. Um, what you need to build are, you know, the second two um, portions, you know, what your purpose, your plans, your, you know, goals are, and then, you know, it's like, you know, what your mindset is, basically. And so I have decided that Caroline is, um, she's very accommodating, she's extremely pleasant, when she's around you, yeah, uh huh. She's a chambermaid. She's a chambermaid and she's a sewer. So she comes in contact with the family, the visitors, the guests. She's always on, always, always, always on. And so I only have maybe three incidents of things that happen in Caroline's life. And so I incorporate those in between there you know, in telling her story, but all the other things are just like, you know, filling in the space. You know, she's this, you know, big, happy little Lego person, but you need to keep attaching things to her to make her complete. Now, third person is outside of the box, and you don't have to have a specific, um, <clears throat> um, let me see, you, well, you choose your time, of course, your time and your place. Um, the, the same things do uh, apply to them as far as what's driving you, what are your passions, what are your goals, um, you know, where did you come from, what's your mindset. Think about physical characteristics um, because if it's somebody that's already set as a so first person um, narrative that you're doing or a first person interpretation that you're doing, they might say, Lane Alice, you can't say, you know, that Alice is a lame. She got, you know, she went to a tent meeting, she went to a cat meeting, sees a lady on her, and she's not lame anymore. You can't do that. <laughs> but if you're doing third person, you can say, oh, well, you know, it's like, I, you know, I walk with this limp, you know? It's like, oh, well, why do you walk with this limp? Well, you know, it's like, because I was doing this and I injured myself. So you have to, um, you have a lot more flexibility, but you still and all want to make a complete, complete character to where even if you're taken away from that location and you decide to go to IHOP and somebody comes across you at IHOP and you want to take on the persona that you've just been interpreting <laughs> down to the site, you can give them a full story account, a, a full account of you know your life. They'll say, well, when were you born? You know, how old are you? I was like, I don't know. You know, when I was exactly, you know, when I was exactly born, it's like, oh, all right. It's like I noticed that you talk a little funny. You know, it's like, why is that? Oh, my owners are, you know, German. They're Italian or French. You know, so I might sound a little bit like them. Um, use um, the vocabulary. You know, interject um, whatever vocabulary that you might want to have. Any dialect that you want to have. Again, if you're doing first person, you have to stick to what is already documented as much as possible, no, at all times, <laughs> and then add the things through critical thinking skills that you don't know about. You know, what was the temperament like? You know, were they allergic to anything? What was her favorite food? Children ask me things like that all the time as Caroline. It's like, what's your favorite thing to eat, Caroline? 
And I have done my research and I, I was like, oh, well, my favorite thing to eat is soft game. I make a nice pot of soft game. For my children, what's soft game? Oh, it's a fish stew. You put most anything in it. I said, but my children, they love to eat kush kush. What's kush kush? Well, we get a ration of cornmeal, a pack if you're an adult, half a pack if you're a child, and such. And with that, I might make some, some nice whole cakes or some cornbread. I said, after it's become a stale, after it's been here a day or two, if there are any leftovers which are hard to up, I'm taking and turn it into a hatch where I add onions and a little broth from the roasted chicken that I had and such. My children eat it right up. Because I've been hanging out in cookbooks, <laughs> to where I know the ingredients, even though I haven't physically made it, just listing the ingredients, <laughs> just how it's assembled, is going to give a more complete interpretation. So um, that's some, basically, I think, the differences between first and third person. Was that helpful? Yes? OK, excellent. Yes, there. So it's just been recently 
you know, that we're starting to um, delve into them a lot deeper. Um, uh, Nikki Giovanni, um, she is excellent about when she lists um, the Negro spirituals and hymns, she lists them just in prose, the way that, you know, they were uh, written down or taken into account, you know, initially to where, you know, this verse might be this particular way in the northern territories, you know, up here in the tobacco country, and then you get out to the rice coast, and you might have a slightly different verse, but it's the same song. And then you get down to the cotton territories and the cotton states. You know that it's the same song, but it still has a slightly different feel, you know, in the rhythm or the manner, or they might throw in a different verse, something that's applicable to their community or what's going on in their life. That's, that's true of rap, for instance. Yeah. If you try to write.